Philippines is one of the most unequal countries in the entire world. According to a report published by the CIA through the World Factbook, it is the 34th most unequal nation, which ranks it beside African and South American countries, notorious countries when it comes to wealth inequality. Moreover, Credit Suisse, a global bank that is known for wealth management and a lot of controversies going about due to similar wealth conditions, reported that the Philippines has more than $52,000 millionaires, but there are only around 40 individuals with half a million dollars or more. Yet over 100 million people are living in the nation. As the number suggests, the wealth is rather concentrated on just a small group. Furthermore, the nation has a huge problem. The nation has a very strong monopolistic number of companies, which is evident in retail, real estate, banking, telecommunications, mining, and even in new technologies such as fintech. Amongst the most known corporations around the Philippines, the name Ayala is proudly ranked as one of the largest and oldest conglomerates in the land. Proudly to say, they are after all everywhere. From the financial industry with its stakes in the Bank of the Philippines Islands or BPI, which is a huge bank in the nation, it holds over $44 billion in total assets. But what makes BPI stand out is its integration with Ayala's other business, Gcash, a dominant financial technology application, which is basically the app that runs the fintech world of the Philippines. With stakes in both, Ayala is integrating as much as they can with the two, which then pushes BPI's market share in the financial industry. Its other business that it holds stakes in is Globe, which is a massive telecommunications business. It is reported to have over 76 million customers in 2020, which is an insane number. But what's more insane is that we have only introduced two subsidiaries so far, yet these two already have a large presence in two major industries. Ayala is far, far larger than just these two. They are in energy through ACEN, in healthcare through AC Health, in logistics through Intrigo, and so much more. According to its 2021 annual report, it had registered over $5 billion of revenues. And the family behind it? Of course. The Ayala family and Forbes even documented their wealth and estimated it to be over $3.3 billion. Furthermore, the Ayala family is even connected to another enterprise, commonly known as the San Miguel Corporation, or SMC, which is majority owned by the Zobel family, who is the relative of the Ayala family. Likewise, SMC is among the largest providers of consumer products, oil and gas through Petron Corporation, and even owns the Bank of Commerce. But Ayala Conglomerate and San Miguel Corporation are not even the only corporations taking up an entire market share. Its chairman is not even the richest individual in the Philippines. The richest individual is Manuel Villar, with a net worth of around $8.7 billion, which makes it richer than everyone, except for the Sai family, which has a diversified wealth among them. What makes this billionaire stand out, however, is its ties to politics and its controversial amount of wealth. First of all, Villar is famous for its presence in the real estate industry. Its corporation, called Vista Land, is arguably the country's largest property developer. It owns chains of shopping centers and thousands of commercial properties and is even an official builder of the nation's forefront economic engine, which is BPO. Its controversies, on the other hand, are quite a lot. As his family is among the richest in the nation, its connection to politics is stunning. His family has continuously been elected into public office, while not a bad thing. But the problem is, several investigations went into his family's wealth for having offshore corporations for tax havens. This was even at a time when he was a public official in the nation. Furthermore, his corporation was also investigated way back in 2009 for using fake papers to increase its property values. Likewise, he was in office when this happened. Further, reports done by numerous journalists both locally and internationally have reported more about not just Villar and his billion-dollar conglomerates, but are spread across the vast industries and families out there. There are several quote-unquote oligarchs that have sprung up in the past century. These are often claimed by even the government themselves, ones that are too difficult to break, which leaves their impact on the economy far more awful than some may have imagined. After all, as we did not earlier, the Philippines is amongst the most unequal nations globally. This also means that the more unequal the Philippines becomes, the higher its poverty rate, as wealth concentration is provisioned in the names of the upper class, leaving the lower class with little to no room to even provide for themselves. These prime examples, controlling an industry on the other hand, does not mean it will forever stay the way it is. There is a solution to all of these, 
ones that have been proven over histories of governing and politics. Take for example the Nordic region, a profound destination where the few countries that are destined there have come out with amongst the best models around the world. Its measures of income equality have been far better than almost any other country in the world. How did they solve it? Well, numerous studies have found that it is mostly related to substantial welfare, low to non-existent corruption rate, and even economic and press freedom. Not limited to it, as some have cited high tax rates and the willingness to pay them, but also some culture and social structures. These long lines, however, are quite a difficult road to go to, for the Philippines to take. It's going to be a long way before these substantial levels are met, but the best answer we have found thus far has actually already been passed. In the first few months of 2022, the government signed a crucial law that would amend a decades-long act. This act was formerly blockading foreign investments or ownerships for that matter, but with this new law would now allow foreigners to fully own a business in the nation. Specifically, it is now allowed for businesses in key industries such as telecommunications, airlines and railways. This means that with foreign companies entering the nation, we could expect a better business landscape, a more distributed amount of wealth and a more consumer-friendly market. This means that local companies now have to allocate more money back into the businesses instead of paying the top executives, which would benefit the employees, providing higher wages or even more employment. After all, the nation has among the highest unemployment rates in the Asian continent. Furthermore, the recent lockdown of the nation has seen a rapid change in consumption. This benefited largely the small and medium enterprises of the Philippines because people shifted from going to malls to shopping online. But at the same time, this profited the platform providers such as Lazada and Shopee, which again are two companies that more than likely have a duopoly in the nation. But as these are foreign-owned enterprises, it enabled what we have indicated earlier, letting foreign companies enter the nation to allow a more competitive place, whilst providing better incentivizing platforms for the small people, like employees or small businesses. And we also think that the recent change in the financial industry, which opened up financial inclusion to everybody, enabled individuals to access the stock exchange. This helped enable individuals to own and ride the waves of economic growth in the Philippines, whether that is to have a stake in the company, which has long been held by only a few groups, but with the emergence of a new financial instrument, which is famously known as blockchain, that has taken the nation in a rapid pace, such as NFT-based games Axie Infinity, cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. These emerging financial products have led Filipinos to rely on an alternative currency, but also to be more aware of the financial world, which is crucial in enabling a more inclusive nation in the middle to higher income classes. And a lot more would happen that may influence the change in monopolistic businesses, but this start that emerged recently is shaping the Philippines market in a better way. There are obviously a lot more solutions to fix crazy inequality numbers, poverty figures, and have a more diversified economy. But these as we presented are amongst the top contenders for change. Anyway, what do you think?